Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this walnut desk. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how I priced it. Check it out. So for this part of the build, I wanted to bring you guys in and show you a typical custom build for a client. And I wanna start by saying that I use simple techniques to build this project. And if you're patient, anyone can build something like this. So I start out building the base on this project because it's the most difficult part. The construction is simple conceptually in that it's just basically two boxes connected in the center with a drawer compartment. To mill the lumber, I use a variation of my joiner, planer, chop saw, hand planes, and table saw to cut everything down to dimensions. All in all, with all of the material going into this base, the breakdown took me roughly four hours. Also on jobs like this, you wanna make sure you're doing as many cuts as you can in batches without moving the table saw fence. This will give you much more consistency and increase the speed of the job as well. The joinery method I'm using on this build specifically is dominoes because of their speed and their strength. To make this part efficient, I lay out everything first and mark all of the joints and then cut all of the mortises. If I was to cut apart and then glue a part up, it would take a lot longer and take away from the efficiency of the job. I then dry fit the base assembly and measure for my drawers. I wanted my top drawer and my bottom drawer to be specific measurements and because of the little subtle differences in wood, I knew there would be some variations from my drawings. So this is why I did a relative measurement. I then lay out and cut all of the mortises that will be the dominoes for the drawer dividers. I glue up as many parts as I can while they're still flat. This lets me get everything aligned properly and helps avoid twisting and racking. If I was to try and glue the whole thing up at once, you could definitely run into some issues. Once the parts are out of clamps, I clean up as much glue squeeze out and defects as I can. It's a lot easier to do this now while you can still manage the parts compared to when it's fully assembled. Once I clean up all the parts, I add the rest of the stretchers and complete the glue up on each side carcass. So while those parts are drying, I begin the bridge on the back of the desk. For this, I use my CNC in order to get precision and I begin with a template in order for me to use for reference as I do the glue up. And while the CNC was running, I also cut the panels for the cases, so I'm not wasting any time. And I want to send a big thank you out to the wood whisperer, Mark Spagnolo for his suggestion on using walnut plywood on this build instead of using hardwoods. If I was to use hardwoods, it would have probably cost me another four to eight hours on this project and made assembly a lot more difficult. Mark has an awesome executive desk build he referenced for me, and I'll link that in the description if you guys are interested. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that this stage I ran into a bunch of hiccups and I cut the curve in the joinery three different times. My initial plan was garbage and that's where all of the issues came from. My initial plan was to use a, a template in order to route, but the template was too thin and I ended up jumping the router around and ruining this part. I then tried to dado all the joinery first and cut it on the CNC and the CNC actually skipped out and ruined this one. So I settled on cutting the curve on its own and then cutting all the joinery by hand. All in all, this process took about five hours. I then transfer the bridge panel to the matching front and I cut it rough with a jigsaw and then clean it up with a router and a template. So after cutting this part, I realized that there would be an exposed edge of plywood, so I cut a thin strip of hard walnut and I edge banded it in order for it to match. All in all, I wasted about five hours building the curved bridge, which was not included in the final price of the piece, and I ended up losing a little bit of money there. 
So before final assembly on the base, I clean up everything that I can while all the pieces are still manageable. And then I go ahead and I cut the joinery and attach the center part where the bridge and the center drawers are going to be. All in all, after all of this, I was about 20 hours of labor into this part of the build. I then move on to the top where I take my time choosing materials with the best grain pattern that I could find, and I use the same methods to break everything down as I did with all of the materials for the base. Once I have everything square, I use a biscuit joiner for alignment, and then I finish the top with my low angle jack plane, sander, and card scraper to get it prepped for finish. All in all, the construction of the top took me about four hours and went super smooth. I then begin by cutting the parts for the drawers, which was a massive mistake. In my initial bid, I budgeted for roughly $500 for the drawers and the slides by a local company that does that for a living. But I was in a time crunch and I ended up building them myself. And this ended up taking me eight hours roughly. And even when using an awesome jig like this one from Woodcraft, it was so much more work than it should have been. At $50 an hour, you can see how it cost me an extra $400 and that doesn't include any of the raw materials or the cost of the expensive slides. By doing them myself, I ended up costing myself roughly three to $400 in this step. The lead jig from Woodcraft does make some beautiful dovetail drawer boxes though. It's just very time consuming to do eight drawers. That's a lot of cutting. So once I have the drawers assembled, I hit them with a little bit of shellac and some water-based polyacrylic. All in all, like I said, the assembly of the drawers took me roughly nine hours in total, including finish. I move on to cutting the drawer fronts to size now that I have the carcass glued up, and then I sand those and prep those for finish as well. So for this build, I wanted to do a more high-end finish. So I called my buddies up at Bonyara Cabinets. They're right up the street from me in Pittsburgh. They are doing a two-part varnish that they're gonna spray and lay down on there. They've had it in there all morning. Let's go check it out and see how it's going. The finish came out amazing and super professional. If you guys are in the Pittsburgh area, make sure you're checking out Bonyara Cabinets. Once I had all the parts back, I assembled the desk using countersunk face screws and pocket holes on all the plywood. And yes, I said pocket holes. This is what they were made for and this is what I used them for. I then mount all of the drawer slides and fit all of the drawers to the drawer boxes. Once that's done, I move on to the drawer pulls. For these, I use aluminum and I cut them into squares on my table saw with the saw stop turned off. If you have a saw stop, turn it off. I then drill all the holes to make sure they're center, and I clean them up with a buffing wheel. All right, I've gotten all of these polished up. I'm gonna do a little bit more with the hand and a clean rag to get all of the residue from the buffing compound off, and then I'm gonna cut all the leather and wrap this thing up. Let's go. Once everything's cleaned up, I cut all of the leather and I begin installing these drawer pulls. And all in all, this took me roughly five hours to get these done. I use a jig to cut all of the drawer pull holes and then I mount the drawer pulls using the card trick method and I fasten them to the drawer boxes with a screw from the front through the holes that'll be used for the drawer pulls. I then attach all the drawer pulls using a screwdriver in order to eliminate the opportunity for tear out or destroying the screw. For this fastening of the top here, I am using what's called a Z clip. You just cut a slot with the biscuit joiner and then use the clip from the bottom of the top to fasten it on. And this allows for wood movement and is a super fast and simple technique. So after the project gets fully wrapped up, the numbers end up coming in at a total in raw material cost of $1,650. We've got 43 hours of labor minus the five that it took me extra on the bridge. At a 40% margin, you're looking at a $6,400 price tag. 
So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you want to see more of my custom work, I got another video queued up for you right here. I also want to send a big thank you out to Woodcraft for sponsoring this build. I've got links in the description if you want to check out more from them. I also have a podcast called Made for Profit where we have a pricing guide that shows you how to price just like I do in this build. And I've got a link in the description below if you want to check that out. Lastly, I want to thank you one more time for tuning in. Go punch your next project in the face, and I'll see you on the next video.